Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Nigel D'Souza, and on behalf of my co-authors from the NiceFit study, it's a pleasure to speak with you about our research on FIT in patients with high-risk symptoms. In this talk, I will discuss why the NiceFit study was needed, the results of the study, and why FIT could change colorectal clinical practice. This study is needed because the two-week wait pathway is becoming increasingly problematic. This pathway was introduced to fast track and diagnose cancers early, but year on year, the number of referrals of patients with suspected bowel cancer symptoms continues to increase. In 2018, just under 400,000 patients with bowel symptoms were referred. The majority of patients are investigated with a colonoscopy, and yet less than 5% have bowel cancer diagnosed. And the system has led to problems. It incurs huge costs, modeled by NICE at over 120 million pounds per year. It consumes endoscopy capacity, and consequently endoscopy services are struggling to meet cancer waiting targets due to the bottleneck in services created by the two-week wait colonoscopy demand. And the same bottleneck prevents expansion of the bowel cancer screening program, where patients are diagnosed with an earlier cancer stage and better survival outcomes. Over 95% of patients on a two-week wait pathway do not have cancer, but the majority will still undergo a colonoscopy that will reveal normal or benign findings. This process will entail discomfort and inconvenience for many, as well as the risk of complications. The fecal immunochemical test, or FIT, may help identify patients with cancer. Colorectal cancers bleed, and FIT detects blood as a surrogate marker. This immunoassay uses a probe or dipstick to sample feces that can measure fecal hemoglobin down to the nearest microgram of blood per gram of feces. FIT is safe, non-invasive, requires no bowel preparation, can be performed at home, needs only one sample, and at a cost of less than five pounds, is not expensive. FIT has already been recommended by NICE for use in symptomatic patients. In the 2017 DG30 guidance, NICE advised that patients with lower symptoms were only referred on a two-week wait pathway after a positive FIT. But this recommendation was not extended to patients with high-risk symptoms meeting NG12 criteria, and that was due to a lack of high-quality diagnostic accuracy data on FIT in this group of patients. The primary aim of the NICE-FIT study was to establish the sensitivity of FIT to detect colorectal cancer in patients with two-week wait symptoms. One of our secondary aims was to compare the accuracy of FIT in patients with higher symptoms versus patients with lower symptoms in whom it is already recommended. The NICE-FIT study was designed using STAR Diagnostic Accuracy Research Guidelines. Patients referred on a two-group pathway who were vetted for a colonoscopy were invited to take part in the study and perform FIT prior to their colonoscopy. Their fecal hemoglobin results measured on the HM Jack analyzer were compared to their foot colonoscopy findings. A power calculation estimated we needed a minimum of 5,400 patients to answer our primary endpoint. On the basis of work from our pilot study, we began recruitment at multiple sites in London. And once we were badged on the NIHR portfolio, we extended our study to recruit patients at 50 sites across England. Our final analysis included 9,822 patients with FIT and colonoscopy results. 73% of patients had higher symptoms meeting NG12 criteria. Change in bowel habit was the most common reason for referral in patients with symptoms meeting high risk NG12 criteria or low risk DG30 criteria. Colorectal cancer was detected in 3.6% of patients. Serious bowel disease, including high-risk adenomas, inflammatory bowel disease, as well as colorectal cancer, was present in 13%. But the most common finding in patients with high-risk symptoms was a normal colonoscopy in 27% of patients. On this scatter plot, every marker represents a patient, grouped by their diagnosis on the x-axis, and their fecal hemoglobin results plotted to a logarithmic scale on the y-axis. Fecal hemoglobin can be reliably measured down to a concentration called the limit of detection, which can vary by laboratory and by analyzer. 
In our study, the limit of detection was two micrograms of blood per gram of feces. Most patients with a normal colonoscopy or non-serious bowel disease have undetectable fecal hemoglobin or low fecal hemoglobin, while patients with colorectal cancer have elevated fecal hemoglobin concentrations. Out of all patients in our study, just over 20% had more than 10 micrograms of blood per gram of feces, which is the cutoff recommended by NICE and DG30. So if 10 is set up the cutoff for investigation, colonoscopy demand would be reduced by just under 80%, while still detecting 92% of cancers. When the limit of detection is used as a cutoff for investigation, more patients test positive and require investigation, but the sensitivity increases to 97.7%, detecting nearly all cancers that are missed at a cutoff of 10. FIT can also stratify the risk of cancer in serious bowel disease. And when more than 150 micrograms of blood is present per gram of feces, the patient's risk of cancer is 30% and the risk of serious bowel disease is 65%. The sensitivity of fit for cancer was equivalent in patients with high-risk NG12 symptoms and low-risk DG30 symptoms at both cutoffs of two and 10 micrograms of blood per gram of feces. And this is confirmed by looking at the error under the curve for both groups on rock curve analysis. So in conclusion, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, fit has a high diagnostic accuracy for patients with symptoms that we see on the two-week weight pathway. FIT is at least as accurate for patients with high-risk two-week weight symptoms as it is for patients with low-risk two-week weight symptoms for whom it is already recommended by NICE. FIT can stratify the risk of cancer and serious bowel disease and help to prioritize patients for investigation. And if implemented in clinical practice as a rule-out test for cancer, FIT at the limit of detection could reduce two-week weight referrals by over 60% while still detecting 97% of cancers. I'd like to thank the many people that made the study possible, but in particular, the thousands of patients that took part in this study. Thank you.